Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Okay. If you hear a bunch of noise in the background, that's my wife. She's mowing right outside the oh, right outside the house here. And um, today I'm going to try to do the book of Daniel on my laptop. I found my charger, um, but I may have to do some updates. I don't know yet. We'll see. If not, it'll be on the cell phone. But I didn't forget we're going to do it this time. So this morning, when the dogs are going crazy. So this morning, uh, we're going to be reading out of three different scriptures. Jude 1, 1, 1 Corinthians 1, 2, and 1 Peter 1, 2. Sanctified by God the Father, sanctified in Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus through sanctification of the Spirit. Let's start in Jude 1, 1. <coughs> Excuse me. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who were called, sanctified by the Father, by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. This is a greeting. And then Jude goes into what Jude, the book of Jude is famously known for. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 1, 2. And this would be, this is, this is a greeting. Paul, verse 1, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours, grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you seeing the theme here? Now, 1 Peter 1, 2. Verse 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, interesting, they were elected according to his foreknowledge, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace be multiplied. Very interesting. These are all greetings. But how interesting the, the layout of it. Sanctified by God the Father, sanctified in the Christ Jesus, and through sanctification of the Spirit. Mark the union of the three divine persons in all their gracious acts. How unwisely do those believers talk who make preferences in the persons of the Trinity? And it is unwise. I know people who hardly ever talk about Jesus, but always talk about God. I know people who hyper-focus on Jesus and say God has no part to play in this anymore and he's on the other side of the universe. <clears throat> I've known people over the years who don't mention either one of them. Mark the union of the three divine persons in all their gracious acts. How unwisely do those believers talk who make preferences in the persons of the Trinity, who think of Jesus as if he were the embodiment of everything lovely and gracious, while the Father they regard as severely just, but destitute of kindness. Equally wrong are those who magnify the decree of the Father and the atonement of the Son so as to depreciate the work of the Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit does work in this too. In deeds of grace, none of the persons of the Trinity act apart from the rest. They are as united in their deeds as in their essence. In their love towards the chosen, they are one. And in the actions which flow from that great central source, they are still undivided. <clears throat> All three play equal parts in this. Especially notice this in the matter of sanctification. While we may, without mistake, speak of sanctification as the work of the Spirit, yet we must take heed that we do not view it as if the Father and the Son had no part therein. It is correct to speak of sanctification as the work of the Father, of the Son, and of the Spirit, because it's, because it's being done like that. Still doth Jehovah say, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness, 
And thus we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Notice your works aren't what you're doing real time. It has already been put in your path. See the value which God sets upon real holiness. Since the three persons of the Trinity are represented as co-working to produce a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And you, believer, as the follower of Christ, must also set a high value on holiness, upon purity of life and godliness of conversation. Value the blood of Christ as the foundation of your hope, but never speak disparagingly of the work of the Spirit, which is your meetness for the inheritance of the saints in light. This day let us so live as to manifest the work of the triune God in us. So what's the point he's talking about here? There is no one above another. All three are equal. All three are equal. And all three are working equally in us. The Father is just as attentive and active in everyday things today as he was 6,000 years ago. The Lord is just as active in everyday things and attentive in everyday things as he was 6,000 years ago. And the Holy Spirit was just as active in everyday things and attentive as he was 6,000 years ago. See, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It says the Spirit of God floated over the surface of the waters. So the Father and the Holy Spirit are there. But Jesus is the one who created everything because the Bible says in the New Testament, nothing was made that was made nothing nothing that was made was made without him it was by the hands of christ that all things were made so the father is there the son is there he was there at creation and the spirit is there notice all three of them are involved in the creation however long it was before whenever the father knew who we were because the Bible says he already knew us. No, he was marking us out, predestinating us, choosing us. At the same time, Jesus was there. He was learning all the things and setting up all the things that were going to happen. Notice that the works we do are in Christ. So Christ was putting all these works in our path and setting the path that we would walk in our lives whenever we were finally born. And the Holy Spirit was going to take up residence in our hearts. Notice all three of them have a part to play in this. In the justification, in our sanctification, and in our redemption. The Holy Spirit, the Son, the Father. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You can't go outside the three. You can't just say, just one is doing this. Now, there's times whenever we're in conversation, we may just mention one. But you know, when I mention one, I'm, I'm referencing all three. <clears throat> when we do morning prayer here, I may mention the Father, and the prayer may be focused on the Father, but that prayer is to all three. I may mention Jesus Christ, but I'm also referencing the Father and the Holy Spirit at the same time, because all three of them work in unison. There is no separation between them, where one has to wait on another to do something. They All three are doing it, because Jesus and the Father are one, and the Spirit dwells in both. They are separate and together at the same time. And a lot of people, their brains can't process this. It's hard for them to understand that. That's why a lot of people don't believe in the Trinity. They can't understand how they can be three separate and all together at the same time. There's like, no, I just have, there's only one God. I just have one God. Yes. But you're saying that it's a Trinity. Yes. How is that possible? Because the Father and the Son exist equally. The Holy Spirit dwells between the two of them. So it is their Holy Spirit. They are one and the same and they are three individually. But that means that we have three gods. No. Do you worship the Holy Spirit? No. Neither do I. Do you worship one specifically over another? No. Neither do I. I worship them all three together. See, Jesus is God too. 
So when you say Holy Father, you're referencing the Father and the Son because the Father and the Son are one, like the Bible says. We don't pray to the Holy Spirit because we're not commanded to. In fact, we're not supposed to worship anything other than the Father. But when you worship the Father, you worship the Son because the Father and the Son are one. When you are conversing with the Son, you're conversing with the Father because the Father and the Son are one. The Holy Spirit joins it all together. People can't grasp this. They can't understand this. They can't process this information. That's why you have so many out there that deny the Trinity. How can you deny something that the Bible clearly describes? Clearly. We just saw some of it right here. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing that the, the state of understanding today, because people are so reactionary with emotion on these things, instead of stopping and thinking about it. So stopping and listening and stopping and trying to understand a little more. And they only deny themselves and hurt themselves when they do this. The terrible part is when they bring others with them. The father is an individual by himself. The son is an individual by himself. The Holy Spirit is an individual by himself. And yet all three together operate together. All three operate as one. They operate as individual and as one. They are like-minded. You ever see twins? And yet the twins, the two twins, look identical, act identical, everything about them is the same. We'll do this separate things. But then there's times they'll come together and they'll both operate as one entity. You ever see that? how that happens with twins? It's actually kind of weird because sometimes they'll move and it's like they're connected to each other the way they move because they're moving exactly the same. They're thinking the same. They even speak the exact same phrases and sentences because they're so closely connected. But then they can go the other direction and work independently. It's not exactly the same with the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but it's it gives you a, a real life analogy to look at. The Father knows what the Son is going to do. The Son knows what the Father is going to do. The Holy Spirit knows what all three are going to do. In fact, the Bible says the Holy Spirit does what he's told to do. He only repeats what he hears and is given to repeat. So we can't separate them. And a lot of people do out there. A lot of people get into that state. I know people personally that do that. They, they, they'll they'll hyper-focus on one of the Trinity, but ignore the rest. You have to acknowledge all three. Because all three are working in you. The Holy Spirit is our connection to the Son. And the Son is our connection to the Father. Without... Jesus, we have no connection to the Father because it is Jesus on the cross who brought down the partition between man and God. The Holy Spirit is the seal and the promise that connects us to Jesus Christ. Jesus had to leave so the, the Father would send the Holy Spirit, remember? The, the Comforter. So we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us that connects us to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, because of his work on the cross, connects us to the Father. All three. You can't have one without the other. You have to have both. In fact, in the New Testament, it says that. You can't say you have the Father and not have the Son. You can't say you have the Son and not have the Father. You must have both. If you don't, there's a problem. <clears throat> this is another telltale sign of who you're dealing with. I hear all this nonsense about, uh, we're not called to be fruit inspectors. Okay, we may not have that calling, but we're told to. The Bible tells us to. You'll know them by their fruit. And so you want to know who you're dealing with. Because you don't just, just want, don't want to arbitrarily believe anybody that's what they say. Because there's so many out there that are looking to get one over on you. And so we inspect the fruit. What is What, what fruit is this person producing? Hey, well, hold on a second. Bible said, I'll know you by your fruit. I'm seeing your fruit. Uh, it, it's telling on you. Now, that doesn't mean that there has to be a separation because that person still may be a believer. 
But then our duty becomes, we need to help this individual. We need to help this brother or sister change their ways because they're not producing fruit for God. So a lot of people get confused on this stuff. A lot of people get, get confused and, and they can't bring themselves to a place. And I mean, if you read the Bible, you'll come to that conclusion. It's quite easy. But that's the problem. Most of them aren't doing that. You, you, you can't have one without the other. You must have all three. I mean, we're even told in the Bible, baptize in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. If we, by if we're told that by Christ, then why can't we accept that? And on top of that, all three of them, because this process of sanctification that we're in, and that's another pe thing people hate. Although there is no process, it's it's once it's done, it's done. No, it, it's a process up till the day of redemption. The Bible explains that quite quite literally and clearly. But all three of them are working on our sanctification. All three of them. The Holy Spirit teaching us, leading us, convicting us, making intercession for us. The Son died for us, paid the debt we owe for sin, lives for us, is constantly working and making intercession for us. And the Father blessing us, teaching us, giving us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, providing for us. All three, you can't get away from it. A great many people today desire to get away from that because they think if they pick one, I'm going to side with this one. I'm going to exclude the other two because that's all I need. And so they hyper focus on that. And it's funny because they, it, funny enough, they end up turning it into idol worship. Somehow they find a way to turn it into idol worship. Well, I don't need the Holy Spirit and God. I just need Jesus Christ. And they hyper focus on Jesus Christ and turn it into idol worship. How in the past, how is it possible they can do this? Somehow they do. Mankind is so good at doing it the wrong way. And they'll do the same with the Father, and they'll do the same with the Holy Spirit. There are people that worship the Holy Spirit. We're not told to do that. In fact, we're told not to do that. It's weird. It's weird that people can get so off track on something so simple. The, the doctrine of the Trinity is so simple, and it is taught all the way back to the beginning. You can go back, to, if you want extra biblical text, Irenaeus, Polycarp. You can go right back to the lifetime of the apostles and read extra biblical text that talks about this. It's very, very simple. And our joy is in this trinity our hope is in this trinity our desires our wants our needs are all locked into this trinity because of this wonderful free gift of salvation even our salvation is trinitized the father desiring to redeem mankind sent his son to die for us on the cross who provided the Holy Spirit to keep us until he came for us. You can't have salvation unless all three are involved. And yet there are people that try to do that. They try to exclude the other two in some fashion and only have one. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't have wisdom without knowledge. You can't have knowledge without understanding. You can't have one of those three without having the other two, because if you have wisdom, what is the wisdom going to do if there's no knowledge there to, to make you wise over? If you have knowledge, you need wisdom to know how to use it. And in order to know all those things, you need understanding. All three go hand in hand. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. You can't have one without the other. You have to have all three, faith, hope, and love. See, the Bible proves the Trinity over and over and over again. People just don't want to read it. But this wonderful process that we're going through is part of the amazing process that God has put in place for us so that we may become children of God. We are justified at the moment of salvation. The process of sanctification starts and lasts the rest of our lives. 
that we have on this earth until the day of redemption. You can't have one without the other. You must have justification, you must have sanctification, and you must have redemption. You can't have one without the other. All three must be there. You must have those. That's part of the process of sanctification, or that's part of the process of salvation. You are saved, you are changed, and then you're made new. It's amazing. It's so simple, and it's all right there in the book. If people would just read it, they, they don't want to believe there's a trinity, okay, but the book proves it quite clearly. It's up to you to read it and accept it. I believe God's word. I trust his word. I'm not going to turn away from that. I'm not going to look away from that. I believe what it says, and I'm going to lay everything I have on that because I don't want to deny a single part. And miss out on some of the great, great blessings that he's put in store for us concerning those things. And since his Bible says it's this way, I'll, and I believe his Bible, I'm going with that. I'd rather go with that than anything else invented by man. So we have to ask ourselves, do we believe God's word? If we do, we must believe these things because God's word tells us about it. It's so beautiful, it's so simple, it's so easy. We just have to believe it. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up and to sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. It is amazing that your word, in very simple terms, details an explanation of these doctrines and understandings, and yet somehow so many still miss it. They still exclude two and only focus on one. They'll, they'll exclude justification and sanctification in lieu of redemption. They'll exclude um, wisdom and knowledge for understanding. You have to have one of the others, at least. They'll exclude you and the Holy Spirit in lieu of Jesus or any combination of the three. They, your Bible clearly explains to us a, a Trinitarian understanding of the Godhead. And it's explained over and over again in other places. Why do so many, of, so many miss it? Because it's important that it is a Trinity. It's important. And yet they miss it. They don't believe your word. We struggle with believing your word. Well, Father, my prayers make us believe your word. Make us believe your word. And when I say Father, I mean Jesus Christ too, and the Holy Spirit. Because, Father, it is you that inspired. It is Jesus that made them write it down. And it is the Spirit that teaches us from it. And so we need all three. <coughs> <coughs> We need all three of you. We need all parts of the Trinity because we need wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because we need faith, hope, and love. We need your truth beyond all, all other things because without that, uh, how are we ever going to grow in our understanding, grow in our knowledge, and grow in our wisdom? How? We can't. So we need all three of you. So when we pray, Father, we're praying to you, we're praying to our Lord, and we're praying to the Holy Spirit because we're praying to the Godhead. So we thank you, Father. We thank you that we can start to elaborate on these understandings a little bit more, but I thank you especially for teaching us more of these things so that when these false doctrines come, it is easy for us to spot them and push them away and say, no, thank you. The Bible says this, I'm going to believe that. And we can tell who's on the right track and who isn't because a person who isn't on the right track usually gets very angry when we deny them. They get very upset. And I've seen that quite often. But those who are on the right track are usually very calm and reserved because we know how this is working out because your word tells us this. We're reading your word. We're understanding the truth. It's an amazing thing.
Father, why do we get it so wrong so often? Why do we overthink these things, or in some cases underthink them, when your word tells us clearly how it is? It's the way of man. For some reason, man just is stuck in this mode. Father, I pray that it can be changed. I pray that you change that. Make us to think and look at these things your way, to understand them your way, because it is your word. You wrote this. We didn't. Men may have held, held the pen and put it to paper, but these are your words. Lord Jesus, you went out of your way to validate all of these things and say, look, this is what, the, what it says. I'm telling you what it means because I'm the author. Holy Spirit, you're the one constantly teaching all of us, saying, okay, you know what? What he said is true. You're validating these things. How can we possibly gain anything without all three of you? We can't. Because it involves all three of you. And Father, I thank you that there is a, a Godhead. I thank you that there is three members. Because what we get from each member comes together to form the perfect union of body, soul, and spirit. And on that great day, whenever we have our new bodies and we see the full realization of this, then we will all understand clearly what was being done and what is still continuing being done and what would be done in the future. Then we will know. And then we will rejoice and we will glorify you and we will praise you. Because then we will know that there is so much more to this. But these are future things that we don't need to know now, but we will definitely know in the future. And they're important. So Father, help us to grasp at least the basic understanding of this so that we walk in your truth, no variation, and we stand our ground when others try to challenge it. For your glory. And for the glory of the work of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. It, I mean, it's self-explanatory. There should be no debate on this, and yet there's debates worldwide about this. Okay? But... What about what the scriptures say? And as soon as you start to bring out the scriptures, that's when the volatility starts to come in. Because now they know that their argument is going to be deemed invalid by the scriptures, but they do everything they can to deflect from it, okay? But it's still, the scriptures stand. And you say you believe the Bible, then why don't you believe this? And they know the truth, and that's what, what, what the struggle is. They know the truth, you see it on their face. And it makes them angry, okay? Turn away from that. Especially if you're a believer, you know better. Believe the Bible. Don't believe what you want to believe. Believe what it says. Then there's no problems anymore. Then there's no issues. It's, it's always going to be a struggle. It's always going to be a struggle. And there's always going to be people in confusion about these things. But if you can stand for truth and just share what the Lord has given you, the difference it will make in other people is astounding. And so, we just have to wait. We just have to wait and see what people are going to do. Wait and see what the Lord is going to do. But during that time, while we're waiting, we stand for what we know to be true. For what we can prove without a shadow of a doubt. With the bulk of Scripture. And, I mean, if there was no Trinity, then why does the Old Testament talk about it? Job said, this is the Father, I know my Redeemer, his Spirit dwells within me. Daniel, take not your, Father, take not your Holy Spirit away from me. I long to see my Redeemer over and over again. The greats of the Old Testament talk about three. And yet, why do people still struggle with this? Well, we need to have three members of the Trinity. 
We need to have all three of these processes going. We need to have these things because these all, all these things work together. And as soon as we can come to that place where we can start to just even just barely grasp it, everything changes. Our attitude changes. Our, our, our you know, the way we respond to the stuff like this changes. And the life gets easier. And there's more peace. And there's more joy because we're understanding it from God's perspective. That's where those things come from. When we understand it the way he gave it. It's beautiful. It's simple. It's amazing. So I'm going to keep telling people. I'm going to keep sharing what the Lord is showing me. I'm going to keep giving it to them from the Bible. People are either going to believe it or they're not. I can't make anybody believe it, but I can sure pray for them that the Lord will open their heart for understanding. Open their mind for knowledge. And open them up to wisdom. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.